Mount Etna may look like a postcard, but beneath its familiar slopes, a billion tons of volcanic rock are creeping steadily toward the Mediterranean, sometimes slipping centimeters overnight without a single eruption. Scientists have detected a strange seismic heartbeat pulsing inside the mountain, signaling an invisible threat that could unleash catastrophe. Is this the quiet warning before Etna suddenly cracks apart? And what would that really mean for everyone living nearby? Tourists arrive in Sicily expecting postcard perfection. A snow-capped summit, vineyards climbing green slopes, and villages scattered in the shadow of Europe's tallest volcano. For centuries, Mount Etna has been a symbol of endurance and beauty, its silhouette printed on travel brochures and wine labels. School children learn about its fiery eruptions, but few realize that the real danger isn't always what bursts from the summit. The ground itself, beneath olive groves and quiet piazzas, is on the move. The southeastern flank, home to tens of thousands of people and some of the region's busiest roads, shifts inch by inch, month after month, all but invisible to the naked eye. This isn't the slow crumble of weathered rock, or the result of rain carving gullies down the mountainside. Instead, an entire block of volcanic earth, weighing more than a billion tons, is sliding as a single, connected mass. Scientists call it the coherent block. It moves not as a collection of landslides, but as a giant, united slab, its boundaries traced by sharp faults that cut through farmland and extend out beneath the sea. Local life adapts to this hidden instability in small ways. In towns like Zafarana, Zafe Rana, and Nicolosi, Neko LOHC, residents repaint cracked walls and repave roads that seem to warp and buckle without warning. Property markers drift meters over the years, sometimes outpacing the efforts of surveyors and local authorities. Some families keep quiet records of how far their gardens have shifted since the turn of the millennium. The changes are slow, but relentless. The scale of movement is staggering. GPS instruments and satellite radar reveal that the southeastern slope slides up to 4 centimeters each month in certain hotspots. That's faster than many of the world's most notorious landslide zones. Yet, from a cafe terrace or a vineyard path, the threat remains out of sight. The volcano's postcard image hides the reality. Etna is not a frozen monument, but a restless giant, its lower flanks quietly straining against gravity and the pressures building deep within. This disconnect between appearance and reality shapes every decision around the mountain. Tourism campaigns celebrate Etna's beauty, while hazard maps quietly redraw the lines of risk. Civil defense planners debate how to protect towns that sit atop a moving foundation. Scientists, meanwhile, race to understand the mechanics of the creeping block how magma, gravity, and faults conspire to keep the land in motion. The postcard view draws people in. The hidden hazard is what keeps them watching, and for some, worrying. In the shadow of Etna, the ground beneath your feet is never quite as solid as it seems. Deep beneath the vineyards and villages, a hidden engine drives Etna's slow motion slide. Magma, rising from the mantle, doesn't always announce itself with fireworks at the summit. Instead, it seeps into cracks far below the surface, prying open the mountain's flanks with relentless pressure. Each new pulse of molten rock forces the southeastern block outward, straining ancient faults and splitting the ground in ways no one can see from above. This isn't a one-way process. As magma intrudes, it pushes the block, and the block, in turn, creates more space for magma. The result is a self-reinforcing cycle, a feedback loop that can quietly accelerate without warning. When the block shifts, even by a few centimeters, it opens voids deep inside the volcano. Magma quickly fills these gaps, raising the internal pressure and priming the system for the next round of movement. Each slip makes the next one easier and the cycle repeats, gaining momentum with every turn. Researchers at the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology describe this process as a dialogue between rock and magma. One volcanologist put it plainly, Etna's real threat is not what erupts, it's what slides. Recent geodetic records show that some sectors of the southeastern flank 
have doubled their slip rates in just a decade. Where the ground once crept along at 2 cm per month, hotspots now clock up to 4. These numbers are more than statistics. They are the signature of a system growing more restless, more unpredictable. The internal mechanics are complex, but the principle is simple. Magma intrusion acts like a hydraulic jack, forcing cracks wider and lubricating the slip surface. Gravity pulls the block downhill, but it's the magma's pressure that keeps the process alive. With each episode of movement, the volcano becomes a little less stable, the cracks a little wider, the risk of sudden failure a little greater. Scientists have watched this cycle play out in real time, mapping how bursts of magma intrusion match sudden jumps in ground motion. The evidence is clear. Etna's sliding flank is not a passive passenger, but an active participant in its own instability. What makes this cycle so troubling is its potential to accelerate. As the block moves and magma fills the voids, the system can tip from slow creep to rapid slip. This isn't just theory. Past episodes have shown that what starts as a gentle nudge can become a landslide, given the right combination of pressure and gravity. The feedback loop, once set in motion, can be difficult to interrupt. For those living on the mountain slopes, the danger lies not only in what's visible, but in the silent, invisible machinery grinding away beneath their feet. Every few hours, a pulse travels through Mount Etna, a tremor so regular that some scientists call it the volcano's heartbeat. It doesn't sound like a classic earthquake. Instead, sensors pick up a low rhythmic thumping deep within the southeast flank matching the slow, steady slide of the billion-ton block. The signal is subtle, almost like the ticking of a hidden clock, but it shows up again and again in seismic records. In 2024, the pattern became impossible to ignore. A remote sensing analyst at the Italian Space Agency noticed faint thermal flashes on satellite images, tiny hotspots flaring along fresh fissures, always in sync with the next seismic pulse. The timing was uncanny. Each burst of heat followed a wave of low-frequency tremor, as if the mountain itself was exhaling through its cracks. The data told a story that ordinary eyes could never see. Seismic stations along Etna's rift zones recorded clusters of microquakes, bursts of energy barely perceptible but spaced with a precision that mirrored the block's movement measured by GPS. When the block slid a few centimeters, the tremor surged, and satellites caught a thread of warmth blooming along the fault. The correlation was so tight that researchers began to wonder if these pulses were not just symptoms, but signals of something deeper, a mechanical rhythm linking magma, rock, and motion. These discoveries raised more questions than answers. Was the heartbeat a warning, a countdown, or simply the natural breathing of a living volcano? Analysts pored over years of seismic and satellite archives, searching for missed patterns or hidden triggers. Some found that the heartbeat grew louder during periods of increased flank slip, while others pointed to quiet years when the signals faded but the ground kept moving. The only certainty was that Etna's internal rhythm is real, measurable, and still not fully understood. For now, the mountain keeps its secrets, pulsing beneath the surface, sending out clues in tremor and heat, waiting for someone to decode the message. In 2018, a team of Italian and German geoscientists set out to answer a question that had troubled volcano experts for decades. Was Mount Etna's sliding flank truly anchored at its base, or was the instability spreading beneath the sea? Their research ship deployed a grid of acoustic transponders and GPS-linked buoys along the submerged slope, tracking the position of each node with centimeter-level precision. The plan was to monitor for subtle shifts, millimeter by millimeter, over months. Instead, within days, the instruments recorded a surprise. The underwater base of Etna's southeastern block was moving, not as a passive foundation, but as an active extension of the sliding mass on land. 
The displacement matched onshore rates, with some events registering up to 4 centimeters in just 8 days. The discovery upended decades of hazard modeling. For years, many believed that the mountain's visible cracks and faults would eventually reach a stable, immovable base beneath the Mediterranean. The 2018 data proved otherwise. The entire sliding block, from the vineyards above to the seafloor hundreds of meters below, was creeping toward deeper water as a single, coherent unit. The southern submarine boundary, mapped as a razor-sharp fault scarp, showed the same right lateral slip and extension seen on shore, confirmed by high-resolution bathymetry and sediment cores that captured evidence of past landslides and rapid sediment redeposition. The lead scientist on the expedition described the moment the data came in. When we realized the underwater base was moving, it was a paradigm shift for Mediterranean tsunami hazard. Internal logs detail a flurry of late-night calls to INGV headquarters and urgent data checks to rule out instrument error. The numbers held. The risk was no longer just a matter of what happened above the waterline. Flank failure could begin far below the surface, with the toe of the volcano sliding first and dragging the entire slope with it. This bottom-up threat means that catastrophic collapse and the tsunamis it could unleash might be triggered in places invisible to satellites or onshore observers. Since 2018, expanded seafloor arrays have continued to track the submarine block, confirming that Etna's instability is a full depth hazard, not just a surface phenomenon. After an eruption, the mountain rarely rests. Instead, the sliding block often surges forward in sudden bursts, as if the volcano is catching its breath before the next round. Geodetic records show that some of the fastest movements on Etna's southeastern flank have come not during eruptions but in the quiet months after the lava stops. Even in years with little surface activity, the block keeps creeping, sometimes faster than before. A volcanologist at INGV puts it bluntly, the calm is never truly calm, the ground doesn't wait for fireworks. History offers a stark reminder. In 1669, Etna's mid-flank ruptured open above the towns, sending months of lava pouring down toward Catania. Merchant ledgers and parish records from that year describe fields splitting apart and roads twisting out of shape long before the eruption began. Letters from city officials pleaded for help as cracks widened and families debated whether to stay or flee. Modern geologists have mapped these centuries-old accounts onto today's fissures, finding that the same zones now flagged by GPS and INSA were the ones splitting open in 1669. An Etna historian sums it up. Splitting ground was seen as an omen. Today, GPS says it's the same warning in numbers. The risk doesn't end with lava. If the entire sliding block fails, the consequences could reach far beyond Sicily. Tsunami models, built from real seafloor mapping and worst-case collapse scenarios, predict waves up to 30 to 50 meters tall crashing into the coast within minutes. Malta could see the first surge in just 15 minutes. The Greek and North African shores might have barely an hour to respond. Ports, refineries, and data cables, lifelines for millions, sit squarely in the path. A tsunami modeler describes the scenario. It's not just water, it's a wall moving as fast as a highway truck with almost no warning. The pattern is clear. Etna's sliding flank does not follow the rhythm of eruptions alone. It accelerates in silence, echoes the past, and holds the potential to trigger disaster on a scale few have witnessed. The clock is always ticking, even when the summit is quiet. On the eastern slopes of Mount Etna, daily life means living with uncertainty. In Zafarana, a retired schoolteacher keeps a faded notebook on her kitchen table. Each spring, she steps out to the garden and notes how far the stone boundary wall has moved. Since the year 2000, her records show the wall has drifted over two meters, quietly outpacing every attempt by the local council to redraw property lines. The road outside her house, once straight, now bends in a gentle arc. Asphalt patches cover old cracks, but new ones appear each winter, splitting the surface like the veins of a leaf. She's not alone. Across the region, families repaint fissured walls, move garden fences, and mark fresh measurements on door frames. In Lingua Glossa, 
A bakery owner remembers when his shop's doorway shifted so far off center that customers joked about needing a compass to find the bread. Some residents have given up on repairs, letting the ground decide where their property ends. Others adapt in quieter ways, keeping GPS trackers on their land or hanging plumb lines from ceilings to watch for the next tilt. The changes rarely make headlines, but they shape daily choices – where to build, when to repair, whether to stay. For those who call Etna home, the mountain's slow-motion drift is not just a scientific curiosity. It's a force that rewrites maps, tests patience, and reminds everyone that stability is never guaranteed. The need for reliable warnings isn't abstract here. It's woven into the routines of people who have learned to measure risk in centimeters, not just in eruptions. Sensors scattered across Etna's flanks feed a stream of numbers to monitoring centers in Catania and Rome. In certain zones, the ground slides up to 4 centimeters each month, rates that would be alarming even in notorious landslide regions. Specialists watch for sudden jumps in these numbers, knowing that a sharp step in GPS velocity can signal a dangerous phase shift. When the ground's movement doubles overnight, or a new fissure opens along a mid-flank road, these are not just technical details, they are red flags, the closest thing to a warning bell this volcano offers. A civil protection analyst describes the challenge. We focus on step changes, not background noise. If a hotspot goes from 2 to 4 centimeters per month, that's a call to action. Yet the warning system has gaps. Seafloor geodesy, which tracks the submarine base where collapse could begin, is still sparse. Key ports and refineries, critical to Sicily's economy, lie near zones with limited sensor coverage. Thermal satellites sometimes catch faint heat signatures along new fractures, but without dense, real-time data, these clues can be missed. Civil drills emphasize what matters. Clusters of deep, low-frequency quakes, sudden sea drawdown at the coast, and abrupt velocity spikes on geodetic charts. The reality is stark. While scientists can define the watch list, the network to catch every signal is not yet complete. For those living and working around Etna, the gap between what can be measured and what can be warned about remains uncomfortably wide. Mount Etna's southeastern flank is slipping toward the Mediterranean at rates measured up to 4 cm per month, according to GPS and satellite data collected since 2018. Historical records confirm that the volcano's 1669 eruption devastated Catania after a mid-flank rupture, an event that mirrors today's most yin stable zones. Recent seafloor monitoring has revealed that movement begins not just on land, but at the volcano's underwater base, indicating a deep-rooted process. Despite decades of research, the exact cause of Etna's rhythmic seismic heartbeat, which matches the sliding rate, remains unexplained. Scientists agree on the warning signs, sudden jumps in ground velocity, new fissures on the mid-flank, clusters of deep, low-frequency earthquakes, and rapid changes in sea level. Yet, with only sparse coastal monitoring, many communities remain exposed. The evidence shows that Etna's hazard is driven by slow, relentless mechanics, not just dramatic eruptions. Whether we are witnessing another cycle or the early stages of collapse is a question only future data can answer.